A very good evening to you out there. Welcome once again to the Potter's Gate online broadcast. I hope you had a wonderful day at work today. If you are one of those people working all right, uh, with, um, you know, in the marketplace, I want to welcome you tonight. I just, you know, have a, a sense to, you know, pray with you, share some points that I felt the Spirit of the Lord you know, has been, you know, staring in my spirit uh, for a few days now. Uh, we Yesterday we looked at something on the concept of, you know, divine separation. Tonight, I, 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 I would like to, you know, just minister along that line, but in a very, you know, a, a, a nutshell, I want to speak on the concept of you know, being steered by the Spirit, being led by the Spirit. And of course, I've titled this School of the Spirit. We used to run uh, uh, this uh, class called the School of the Spirit while I was in, in Lagos, Nigeria back then. And it used to be a beautiful time, you know, just to talk about the things of the Spirit, get to understand the ways of the Spirit. By the way, our prophetic uh, uh, leadership school, it's going to be starting soon. I've been working on it, trying to put things together. And in fact, I want to see this uh, uh, session tonight as kind of an introduction to some of the things that we're going to be dealing with in the prophetic school. I'm looking forward to, you know, to us this class. I tell you, it's going to be a time of transformation, a time of renewal, a time of, you know, stepping up into another dimension in the activities of the spirit. God has been dealing with me in various ways, and I'm so, so excited to share some of the things the spirit of the Lord has been, you know, bringing to my understanding but before we do all of that can we just take a few minutes to pray like i said i'm not going to take your time tonight i'm hoping that in the next half an hour i should be done because i need to break my fast you're right so let, let's pray father we come before you tonight again we just step into the atmosphere of your voice yes there is, there is something that you are saying. There is a release of your heart, of your mind, of your intention for this particular season, this moment, this epoch, yes, that you have ushered us into. We thank you, Lord, for the unveiling of your heart and of your mind. We thank you, Father, for taking us even to that reality of life where we are able to see, yes, uh, a, a glimmer of the things that you are unfolding in our day. And we rejoice in this, that we are part of a company of them called chosen, yes, Father, to be alive, but not just to be alive, but to be alive in your spirit, through your spirit, to see and to know the things that you're doing. I'm so glad, oh Father. Tonight I pray in the name of Jesus that anyone out there who will stumble on this uh, uh, broadcast, anyone that your spirit will draw, Lord, that the things that we will be looking into tonight, the things that we'll be talking about will allow us to walk and develop our spirit, yes, in such a way that we are able to enter into the nymphos, into the atmosphere of of your of your declaration there is a now word that is dangling that is you are moving in the spirit there is something that you are saying and we're tapping into that thank you lord for the way that you have been speaking to me and i know i'm not the only one yes when you speak your voice is like a broadcast to as many that will have the right uh, 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 the, the, the the right uh, material the 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 right uh, uh, um, device, if you will, to connect to uh, what you're saying. We will pick it. It's like a TV. It's like somebody, yes, watching a TV. If we have the right device, we will pick an image. If we have the ability to connect the right frequency, we will touch. Thank you, Father, that you are speaking and those who have the ears to hear. Yes, I'm beginning to hear things. I'm beginning to pick things, not just to sense it. We are hearing things. We are seeing things. And I thank you, oh God, that you are speaking to us regarding, yes, the next phase, the next dimension of life, the next position of your activity in the earth. We honor you. We glorify you for this. Thank you once again that tonight as we connect, as we yield, as we surrender, that Lord, tonight you will take us deeper. You will take us, oh 
God, yes, Father, you will bring us to a new position of clarity. Yes, Father, thank you that everyone that will join or will be listening to this podcast or broadcast later, Father, will be upgraded because that is the essence of the school of the spirit. I'm looking forward to uh, 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 the, the school of Zadok that we're about to start, the prophetic school. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the things that you're going to be saying, to the new emphasis, to the upgrade that you're going to be bringing. I thank you, God, for, yes, thank you for the school of uh, 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 the prophetic, oh God, that will enhance the life of the people. Yes, you are helping us to understand what the prophetic is. The prophetic is about you, is about your heart, is about your desire, is about your counsel, is about, yes, bringing forth your will to, to, to become manifest in time, taking that which is eternal and bringing them into time. Thank you. We honor you tonight. I thank you for your grace, oh God, that is available. Thank you, Father, for renewal. Thank you, Father, for redirection. Thank you, Father, for the leading of your spirit. Mm. The leading of your spirit. I honor you, oh God, tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Uh, good evening, my dear brother, uh, Brother Norman. Thank you for joining tonight. We appreciate it. God bless you. Amen. And anyone out there watching or joining us tonight, I want to welcome you tonight. I just want to, you know, pour my spirit again, you know, uh, into someone. God is pouring new things into my spirit. God is speaking to me. God is, you know, dealing with me. And we are hearing, you know, testimony. God is doing mighty things and we're bringing clarity and direction into lives. If things that people think are impossible are becoming just possible like that, just like that. And we are not into this, all right, to be able to get something. No, we want to become all that the Father, amen, has ordained for us. And I'm and I'm so, so glad, amen, and excited about the things, amen, the Spirit of the Lord is doing in our day. A couple of things. <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to begin to track, amen, as we focus on, you know, uh, uh, some key words, amen, that I believe the Spirit of the Lord, amen, is steering. You know, whenever God wants to move, he moves through the steering of his word. The word of God always go forth before the outpouring of the Spirit, amen. God does not pour his Spirit where his word has not been, where his word has not gone, all right? The Bible says, yes, the, the Spirit of the Lord was upon this, was upon the faith of the deep and God said you understand so we we want to understand the nature of the days that we live in we want to understand the dynamics of the times amen the dynamics of the outpouring of the spirit of God in our day is totally different from amen what the Lord did and how he poured out himself amen uh, 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 10 years ago 15 years ago maybe 20 years ago or even 100 years ago amen the nature of the outpouring of this of the spirit amen of this season in time requires that we we get to be educated again in the school of the spirit and that's something i feel that i'm going to be assisting the body of christ to understand amen in this season and time because like i said uh, 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 god is pouring out himself god is pouring out himself and through that outpouring is pouring us out amen into the nations the more god pours himself into us the more we understand amen uh, uh, the, the the demand and the requirement amen and the instructions of the spirit the more we become the conduit amen the vessel of the outpouring of the spirit of god i think there are a lot of things that we have amen misunderstood with misconstrued amen we've taken for granted in the past all right that the lord is correcting and i've been speaking about that i mean that the days that we're living are days of restoration and i've been talking about amen what god is restoring first of all is restoring himself amen to the very throne of our heart to the very throne of our life amen yes god is restoring himself is restoring his order is restoring amen his standard is restoring his value is restoring amen his, his identity he's restoring his mark 
Amen. He's restoring his, his presence. He's restoring his glory. Hallelujah. He's restoring, amen, his doctrine. He's restoring, you know, his, his authority. You may say, but all of this thing have always been there. They've been there, all right? But the, the reality is we kicked him out. <laughs> we kicked him out of his house. We kicked him out of his church like, amen, they did in the days of, our, of prophet Ezekiel and prophet Isaiah. God had to call Ezekiel. He said, come and see what, amen, this guy is are doing this elders are doing in my house they brought the wrong spirits they brought the wrong order they brought the wrong you know identity they brought the image of jealousy into my temple he said ezekiel come and see what they're doing he says so that you know i may be driven out of my temple so as we continue to cry, as we continue to pray, as we continue to seek the face of God, what God is doing in respond, amen, to our prayer, to our intercession is that he's, he's restoring himself, he's bringing himself back, amen. He must come and sit and take, amen, the, his rightful place at the very throne of our heart, amen. It's from there that God moves, Amen. God is not just interested in using, you know, using somebody. He wants to, first of all, take his rightful place in our life. When he sits, amen, and his government are well seated within our life, then through that point, amen, of authority and, and kingdom, amen, administration, he can then pour himself through our lives to the nations. We are the answer. We are the solution, hallelujah. We are, amen, the, 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 the healing that the nation needs. We are the direction, we are the instruction that the nation needs. But we know that of ourselves, we can do nothing. Of myself, I can do nothing. So we, we are depending, we are trusting, we are waiting, amen. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That word renew means they will exchange, amen, their weakness for his strength, hallelujah. And I can assure you that we are in a day where God, amen, is doing a new thing. And what God is doing today in within this house, amen, is bringing redirection, is bringing, amen, instruction, is bringing clarity, amen. We've been dealing with that, amen, yes. God said, God spoke to us, uh, to us end of last year, uh, amen, to us the beginning of this year. Yeah, your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. Hallelujah. Yes. God has been speaking to us and we are responding to the speakings of God. Uh, one of the things that I believe the Lord is doing in this very moment in time, amen, is that he's tearing our hearts towards that place where we are yearning, where we are longing, where we are desiring, amen, his, his presence again. Here is the word in Isaiah 44 verse 3, amen. It says, I will pour out, amen, I will pour water on, 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 on the thirsty land, hallelujah, for there to be an outpouring, there has to be, first of all, a recognition, amen, yes, in our life that we are dry, amen, there has to be an acknowledgement, there has to be a point in time where we realize that we are famished, that we are drained, amen, that all of the things that we have, you know, tried to use, you know, to substitute, amen, the things of God are no longer working. There has to be that quest, amen, if, if we're sincere, if we're honest, if we're truly longing and really desiring God to move in our time, in our day, hallelujah. We have to come to that point where we realize, that, wait a minute, amen, I am nothing without him. I'm not talking about, amen, how we have perfected, amen, our lingua. I'm not talking about how we have perfected, amen, you know, our so-called, you know, apostolic expression. I'm not talking about how we have perfected, amen, our kingdom, you know, uh, uh, expression. No, I'm not talking about, we have perfected all of those things. The Bible says, amen, we have a form, a form of godliness. That is the problem we have today. Those who have a form. And those, amen, who 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 are who have been formed, we want to we want to separate, amen, the idea who of, of those who have a form of godliness from those who are truly being formed by godliness. See, there are two different kind of people. Those who have a form of godliness, when you meet them, <laughs> you may be you may mistaken them, amen, you know, for the 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 the, the, the authentic. Because they have all the lingua, they have all the language, they have all the expression, amen. They know when to jump, they know how, they, everything that we do in the church, they have perfected, except that they don't have the spirit and they don't have the life. 
And if there's anything that's going to change, amen, the situation that we're in today, if there's anything that is going to transform, if there's anything that is going to bring a people to a new position where, amen, they can cry out to God, is that when, is that, is that a people has to be filled with the life of God. With the life of God. There is nothing we can, we can do, amen, to, 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 to replace that desire to be, to be full of God. Amen. The Bible says, I will pour out on the thirsty land and streams on a dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on the, on, on your offspring and my blessing on your what? Descendants. If you read the verse 1 of that Isaiah 44 to verse 3, you have a context of what God is saying. And I, I believe without a shadow of doubt that there's an outpouring of the Spirit of God. Somebody not too long ago, I heard the person say, well, the Lord has stopped pouring himself. I said, oh, that's a big lie. We will never, amen, we will never have enough of the outpouring of the Spirit. The issue is when we don't have clarity and understanding amen or we are limited in the in the knowledge and in the interpretation of biblical truth then we limit it you know people think well the outpouring of the spirit of god stopped on the day of pentecost no it has continued it will always continue amen until in fact the day before jesus returned to the earth he will be pouring out himself think about it because our idea of the outpouring of the Spirit is we're thinking of something, you know, that is being poured out. You know, no, no. The outpouring of the Spirit speaks of the release of the Spirit of God. The release of knowledge and wisdom, grace that we need. All that the Father pours out of himself are the ability and the requirement, the grace that we need to carry out the things, amen, that has been committed into our hands. So I believe God tonight that there will be a flow of God's grace into your space. There will be a steering of the heart. There will be a quest. That there will be a newness, a passion. There will be a renewal, amen, yes, of the desire for the things of God. But beyond the things of God, but for God himself. That there will be a quest in you, longing. Oh, that your spirit will quest as the deer pants. That to, tonight, ah, that there will be a pursuing, yes. That there will be a deep, a, a deep, a deepening, yes, of, of, of your, of your heart towards the things of God. Yes, that as the deer pants for the water, your spirit, your soul, your mind will continue to yearn and pant for him. That you will run, yes, to the place called the water of life. That you will find God tonight, yes, in the new realities of his intentions and counsel for your life. Oh, that there will be a manifestation of the spirit of supplication. That tonight you will enter into that atmosphere of getting to know and getting to understand and getting to flow in the direction of God's intentions for your life. That your heart tonight will align to the will of God. It is my prayer, oh, that everything about your life will quest for him, will quest for him, will quest for him more than you quest for your daily food, will thirst for him more than you thirst, yes, for water in the sunny, in the dry land. Oh, that your spirit will cry out for more, more of God. God, I need more of you in my life. I need more of your ways. More of your spirit, more of your direction. Oh, that tonight in the name of Jesus, the spirit of supplication, the spirit of prayer, the spirit of intercession, the spirit of thanksgiving, yes, will flow into your life. That all that will require to know God in a new way will become what you quest for, will become what you desire. That the spirit of God may be revealed again in your life. This is my prayer, friends. This is my prayer for you. This is my desire for you. The Bible talk about how Jesus was, was, was full of the Spirit and was led, amen, was led into Jordan. Ah, 
that you'll be full of the spirit that in in that in that order of life of you being full of the spirit i mean if the bible talk about us being full of the spirit it means that the spirit comes to us in measure when you when when there is when there is an idea of something being full it means that thing can also be a full or can be half empty uh, jesus was full of the spirit i used to teach on this as, as part of the concept of growing and developing. Yes, in the nature of, of the prophetic. You have to be full of the spirit. When you are full of something, it means that amen, you can have more. You've come to the point of saturation. When you are full of something, you can pour more. The Bible talk about, yes, God blessing us. Amen, uh, press down, running over, shaking together. When you come to that point where, you know, what you have received start flowing out. Uh, it's from that point, amen, that truly ministry is done. Ministry is never to be done from the place of reserve. <laughs> ministry must be done. And whatever that ministry is, your ministry could be at your workplace. But particularly those of you who are working, amen, yes, in the marketplace. Wow. You need an infant feeling of the spirit as a Daniel to be able, amen, to carry out the intentions of God. So it's important that we understand the context, amen, of, 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 of what we're talking about in this season into how we need, how the church needs, yes, and not pour of the spirit of God. What are the manifestation of the outpouring of the spirit of God? The sevenfold nature and character of God will begin to flow through your life unsolicited. When you say you are full of the spirit, amen, then the, the very life, the very direction, the very instruction, amen, the very nature, the very character of God, amen, becomes what defines your life, becomes what characterizes your life. Yes. Yes, what the scripture says, the Bible says, yes. In Isaiah chapter, you know, chapter 9 verse 2 says, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom. When there is an outpouring, the, the manifestation of the outpouring of the Spirit of God in our life is the, is, the, is the abilities, the capacity to express the wisdom that is not of this world. The, the, and, and whenever wisdom is in operation in our life, we get to build things that would dumbfound man. We get, to, we get to offer solution. We get to bring clarity and direction to complex things. When wisdom is in operation in our life, hallelujah, things that looks impossible, things that looks, you know, you know, difficult, things that people are, are cracking their head and trying to find, you just come there. You look at Daniel, you look at David, you look at, you know, Joseph, you look at Esther, you look at our, our Lord Jesus Christ, you look at MS, you know, Paul, hallelujah. You look at all these great heroes and, uh, you know, men and women who have gone ahead of us. Yes, they were manifesting the outpouring, the outpouring of the Spirit of God is very tangible. And this is what I'm calling you to, amen, when we talk about the school of the Spirit, the school of the Spirit of Christ. Jesus Christ, our pattern, is the pattern son. Amen. Yes, he's the pattern of the Father. The Bible says Jesus. Not that they didn't say Jesus Christ. They say Jesus, the son of Mary. The reason why, amen, Jesus was able to do the things that, because he waited for the outpouring, for the release of the Christ, of the Messianic grace of, of, of the Father upon him. A body you have prepared for me. That, that, that Christ anointing has to be housed in a Jesus body. He himself said, Amen. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. Greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. If only you can follow. If only you can, you know, abide by the same values. Listen, our body, hallelujah, is meant for the release of that which has been poured into us. 
if we will wait, if we will trust, if we will depend, hallelujah, on God, if we will trust, amen, in the ways of God, in the values, in the principle of God, if we will give God the same vessel, hallelujah, that Jesus offered, if we will give God the same vessel that Joseph offered, if we will give God the same vessel that Mary offered, if we will give God the same vessel, hallelujah, that Isaiah offered, that Daniel offered, that Enoch offered, that Enos offered, we will receive of the same spirit. There are no two, you know, two kinds of the outpouring of the spirit of God. It's just one, one, one spirit. Poured out. It's the same spirit that was poured out amen, in the beginning when darkness was upon the face of the deep. It's the same spirit that God poured out on the day of Pentecost. It's the same spirit God poured out, hallelujah, 22 years later when Paul, you know, met some guys who were baptized unto, you know, the ministry of, of John. He said, have you guys received the spirit since you believe? They said, we have not even heard of such a thing. Friends, it is critical this day that we begin to yearn, we begin to long for, amen, the outpouring. At every season, in every generation, hallelujah, there's a release of the spirit that, uh, that allow, that enhances people, amen, of that season in time to carry out what they have been assigned. No matter, amen, what we seek to know, to understand about the things of God, if we have not positioned ourselves, if we have not connected to the point where they can pour, hallelujah, heaven into us, nothing is going to happen. Nothing. There are no two ways about it. You have to, you have to bring yourself, amen, to, 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 to the end, hallelujah, of carnality. You have to offer yourself on the altar. You have to, hallelujah, you know, do all the things that is required to receive of the Spirit of God. One of the lies that I've seen in the apostolic is that, amen, we don't need to talk about the outpouring of the Spirit of God. In fact, when you talk about the outpouring of the Spirit, people, people think that you are, you know, you are reducing the concept of the apostolic. They think that, amen, when we talk about kingdom, amen, we don't need. You see, th that's why I said earlier when, when we began this, you know, uh, uh, broadcast, the way, hallelujah, we view and we understand the things of God in the past is totally different from what God is doing now. If you abide, amen, you remain in the mindset of how God moved and how people benchmark and reduce the things of God in the past to what God is doing right now, I tell you, you'll miss God. You will miss him. I want you to say to yourself, I need the outpouring of the Spirit of God for my day. I need, hallelujah, a release of the Spirit of God for my time. I need the release of God for my home. I need the release of the Spirit of God for the ministry, yes, of this season. The third day ministry, the epoch, this epoch requires an outpouring. Pouring. It is the outpouring of the spirit that separates people, that make people do wonders, that make people earlier become indeed proficient in their apostolic mandate. I cannot talk about, listen, I've been waiting on the Lord in the next couple of days. We're going to start our prophetic school. Listen, I couldn't do that by just going back to my notes, you know, and start talking about, I mean, I've got, I mean, people know me when it comes to writing. I, I, I love to write and I do write. Guess what? I said to God, I cannot depend on what I have written. I can't come, amen, uh, with the same material that I, I thought two years ago. No, I want, hallelujah, depth. I want to take the people to a deeper reality. I want the, I want the people to touch something fresh, something new. And how do I go about it? I have to wait on the Lord. I have to trust in God. I have to wait on him to take me to a new height. They say, come up higher and we will show you things that are yet to come. If you don't give God the journey, don't expect a different experience. You see, our problem is we like to presume, we like to assume. Come, let him recalibrate your vision in the place of the outpour. 
come. This is the day of training. This is the day of building up. This is the day of equipping. This is the day where the Spirit of God wants to take you deeper. But if you allow the issues around, if you allow the context of the day to stop you, you will be limited. You will be kept outside. I shared a scripture yesterday. I shared a scripture yesterday. They said, friends, how did you get into this place? You came here without the right garment. There are people who want to engage this new day, who want to engage this epoch, who want to engage, amen, this season and time with the same old garment. It's not going to happen. Heaven wants you, hallelujah, to be undressed so they can redress you for this new day. And this is what, amen, I am saying. It's not going to happen by chance. It's never going to happen by chance. You have to be ready. You have to quest. There has to be a hunger. There has to be a hunger. Those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Righteousness is a standard in the kingdom of God. Righteousness is a standard in the kingdom of God. Yes. You have to undress from yesterday's anointing. From yesterday's knowledge. They have to undress you from yesterday's identity. Remember the scripture says that as we continue to behold him in the mirror of his word, we are being transformed from Glory to glory, glory to glory, glory to glory. There is a new glory, heaven, hallelujah, wants to release. You see, glory is what changes people. <laughs> glory is what changes society. Glory is what changed, you know, nations. When people see a glory that is bigger than their own, they bow. When people come in contact, hallelujah, with the glory that is, that is more awesome that, you know, the Bible says, amen, everything in life, everything God created has a glory. There is a glory of the moon. There is a glory of the sun. The, the glory of the moon is glorious, but when you talk about the glory of the sun, the moon must bow. The church has experienced a glory in the past. But here said the law, there's a greater glory that is about to be released. But the people must prepare for this glory. What are you doing to get yourself aligned to what God is about to do in our day? If you continue to look outside, amen, and you continue to watch the weather from the human sight, you will not hear the sound of rain. You will not see the hand, hallelujah, of a man that is being formed through the cloud. Something is about to happen. I can pick it in my spirit. I can feel it. I'm not here to make noise. I'm here to tell you. That if you pay the price, if you give God the journey, if you will continue, the Bible says, yes, the Lord is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. We're not talking about seeking things. We're talking about seeking the Lord. Seeking his face. Seek the Lord. Seek his face. Come to the school of the spirit. Come learn. The new ways of heaven. Come see another dimension. Of Christ. Come connect to another reality. That is being unveiled. Come up higher. That's what we're talking about. Jesus full of the Holy Spirit left Jordan and was led you see that's what happens when you get to be full of the Spirit you get to be led you know why we, we are not being led you know why we are not hearing God you know why we are not understanding the things of God you know why he's taking us you know you months you know years decades to respond to the things of God because we are not full to be listen to this to be full of the spirit it's it's your it's your it's your it's your duty 
to come to the place of the fullness. You see, you have to be thirsty, you have to be longing, you have to be desiring. Only those who thirst. Listen, I showed you that scripture in Isaiah 44. Let me look at it again. Let's show it, let, let's show, let's show it to you again. Uh, it says, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. Listen, on the thirsty land, not just on any land, on the thirsty land. The thing is you have to be thirsty. Are you thirsty? Those who are hungry, they appreciate, you know, food. When you are really hungry, when they give you food, you appreciate it. If you're really thirsty, when they give you water, you will appreciate it. I have a feeling that our generation are no longer, you know, yearning for the things of God. We spoke about that yesterday. I said, you know, the, the, the kind of passion, the kind of hunger, the kind of desire that, you know, I saw in the, in the 90s cannot be compared, all right, to what we're seeing today. There, there, there's a sense of laxity. There's a sense of, do we have to do all of that? <laughs> do you have to come and, make, and be making noise all the time? Do you have to be telling us these things? I'm not saying something so strange. In the 90s, people will go to church all night. And they're still going to go to work the next day. They're still going to go to work the next day. But they are in the church. They are in the, in, the, in the building. They are going to pray. Some of them might be praying for, you know, material things. But I know many of them were praying. Because I was part of them. We're praying for God to move. They wanted to see the presence of God. They wanted something earlier about their life to be touched, to be transformed. In fact, many of those that were questing for God back in the 90s, many of them today are ministers of the gospel. But many of them were not praying you know, to go into ministry. They were just hungry for God. I can tell you a few that I know. You see, something must happen within our spirit. You see, today there's no hunger for God. There's no hunger for the things of God. Today, when we talk about the things of God, we're looking for, you know, points, you know, keys. We're looking for nuggets. The days that we're living, people don't, don't no, 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 no. Don't give me all of that. I, no, no. Don't bother me. I'm too busy. <laughs> You're too busy. That's why, amen, you can't touch the things of God. That's why they left you on the outer court. Because you're too busy. When you're too busy, amen, that you can't touch the things of God, you are left on the outer court. You are, in fact, you are left outside the temple. Remember, the Gentiles were also allowed to come to worship God, but they keep them outside. There has to be a passion. There has to be a quest. There has to be a longing. I told you that when there's an outpour of the spirit of God, wisdom becomes a manifestation. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The Bible says, yes, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. Who doesn't need understanding in the days that we're living? People are calling us. People are, you know, desiring all kinds of direction. They call me. Why are they calling me? Why do they want these things? Because they believe that you're closer to God. <laughs> you can also get closer to God. But yeah, I'm closer to God because I'm paying the price. Somebody says, is this, is this what we're going to eat? Ah, yes, you can eat. You can live. On, on searching, on questing, on pursuing God. I'm telling you, you can live on that. The foolishness of men that I'm hearing today in the church is uh, all the spiritual things that we're talking about, how can we translate that to, you know, provision? Hi. That's the foolishness of what I'm hearing today. And people call that wisdom. Excuse me, which other job did Jesus was doing? Which other job did Jesus have? You say, you say, you say business is to pr make provide solution for people. 
when you start giving people insight, a man, a man, tap into the into the mind of God, into the mind of God, and he gave, amen. He gave Pharaoh, he gave Pharaoh, amen, the interpretation of the dream. The next day, he became the prime minister of a nation, of a hidden nation, of, of a nation that he was a foreigner. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Daniel was in captivity in the land of Babylon. Which other job did he have? That the fact that he was able to interpret he was able to tell the king about the dream and he gave him the interpretation. The next time, he was in, a, in an elevated position. You can win by pursuing God. Everything that you see in the natural realm are subject to the higher realm of the spirit. I'm not advocating that people should not walk. I've never said that. But I'm saying that even what you're doing, if it's not driven by the Spirit, you'll fail. Because there are people who are better than you in Babylon. <laughs> there are people who are ten times better than you in Babylon. Only the Spirit of God can give you that position that enhances your competence. Competence is a product of the Spirit. Wisdom is a product of the Spirit. Knowledge is the product of the Spirit. Understanding is a product of the Spirit. Power, authority to make things happen. Leadership needs authority and power. Is a product of the Spirit. Here's this, 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 yeah, yeah, the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is a competent Spirit. That's why I said, if you try to compare what we talk about, what we call the outpouring of the spirit, the leading of the spirit by, you know, what men did in the past, you'll be at default because before, when we talk about the pour, outpouring of the spirit, he's running around, amen, in the church, he's jumping and flying, you know, he's rolling on the floor, he's backing, he's doing all these funny, crazy things, all right? Yeah, some of them, maybe they're led. Some of them, many of them, I know they are not led. All right? You know, people have done all kinds of things in the name of the Spirit of God. But hey, we can track when we say we are led by the Spirit. We can track when we say that God is pouring himself upon us. When God pours in, in Spirit upon us, boldness come upon us. Read the book of Acts. We are tracking the book of Acts. It's called the Acts of the Spirit. The Bible says, he who has not the spirit of Christ is not of him. He's not of him. He's not of him. There's a different spirit that has come upon the church. There's a different spirit that the church claims to be the spirit of God. And we see how we are failing, how we are weak, how we have become, a, 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 you know, men pleasers. Today, we do things via, you know, political correctness. That's why the, the church is the most fearful organization on earth today. The church. We are afraid of politicians. I. We are afraid of Babylonians. Because we are no longer being driven by the spirit. When you are driven by the spirit, you know that your life is not in the hand of any man. You know that your life is not in the hand of anyone. You are not amen, at the mercy of anyone. You are not even at the mercy of your own business. Your business is subject to the authority of God. Everything that you do is subject to the authority of God. I tell you, it pays to be, to be led by the Spirit, to live via the life of the Spirit. Till Jesus come, I will be led, I will be living via the Spirit. That's why I keep telling people, my own understanding of the apostolic is completely different from what many are preaching out there. My own understanding of the concepts of the kingdom is totally different from what people are talking about. What is the kingdom when it's not driven by the spirit? What, which kingdom is coming when, when Christ's spirit is not involved? <laughs> How do you understand the word of God when the spirit of God hallelujah, has not been poured? The spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel has not been poured. No wonder people are misinterpreting the word of God. People will tell you, well, God is no longer pouring himself. God, God is no longer pouring his spirit. Because their idea of the spirit is people jumping up and down in church, backing like dogs. 
It's people doing crazy things in the name of God. Let's redefine what it means. That's why I'm showing you the scripture. When there's an outpouring of the spirit, the sevenfold nature and character of God manifests through your life. You become a solution driver. You become an answer. Not just to people, are, but to a nation, to a generation. You cannot but, hallelujah, but to be recognized. No one can ignore somebody whom heaven has poured themselves into. No one. Come on. Let's take time to seek the ways of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to help us. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us. The Holy Spirit wants to take us to a place we've never been before. But if you're not questing, if you're not, if you're not searching, if you're not hungry, I'm not saying, God, I just want your spirit. You've got to be able to define what that outpouring means. You have to define it. Envision what you can do without the outpouring of the spirit. Creativity is of the spirit. Knowledge is of the spirit. All of the things that, that the people are looking for today are products of the spirit. There was nothing made that was made without, hallelujah, the release of the spirit. Think about it. All things are sustained by the word of his power. The word of this power, amen, is the breath of the spirit. And God breath into man. And man became. The principle have not changed. I will pour out my spirit. On the thirsty land. That is what we should be praying. God we ask, oh God, that South Africa will become a thirsty land. God, we ask, oh God, that South Africa will become a thirsty land. You see, a thirsty land is a land that is honest, that has come to it is, it's, 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 you know, the place of truth. We see, many, many nations amen, are shrouded in deception, in lie. No, we don't need God. We've got what we need. We've got, we've got, we've got, you know, you know, people who have wisdom, who have knowledge. Today, South Africa is about to choose, all right, the next, uh, 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 um, you know, justice minister. No, not justice minister, the next uh, 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 chief justice. This is the time we need to pray that those people that will be choosing will not choose the wrong person. I'm sure they will want to counter everything that the former chief justice have done. They've learned. Because the man was bold. He was strong. He did not allow amen, some groups to, you know, to push him under. No, he stood and God was with him. We need people like that. Thank God for Mokwen Mokwen. He was a man of God. Yet, he executed hallelujah, his office with precision, with accuracy, with knowledge, with understanding, with skill. They couldn't fault him. The only time they try to fault him is because he cited, you know, <laughs> the Jews, Israel. But he's got the freedom to choose. Now, but if he has cited, you know, Palestine or something, oh, then it will be okay. No. That's what, that's what makes a leader. That's a true leader. Nobody bends your conscience. You stand for what is right. Oh, we need... To pray for our community, our society. We need, as we pray for, you know, uh, uh, South Africa, we pray for Nigeria. We're praying, hallelujah. Yes. For, for, for America, we're praying for Europe. The, uh, people will cry out and say, God, we are thirsty. We are thirsty for you. We are thirsty for you. We are thirsty for you. We are in need of your wisdom. Our nation is in need of your grace. We need you. You know, God wants to hear that. If he doesn't hear that, what we are reflecting is pride. It is pride, amen, that makes people to express denial. I will pour my spirit on the thirsty land. And streams of water on the dry ground. 
A ground that does not recognize that it's dry, that it's thirsty, is not ready. A person who is not ready, a home that is not ready, that is not ready to acknowledge that we are thirsty. God must help us to see that we have come to the end of ourselves. Then the day of the Lord begins in our life. It's called the school of the spirit, friends. That's what we're doing. I'm introducing you. I'm re- introducing you to the things of God. I know. Oh, I know you know about the things of God. I know. I know you've been on this journey, but hey, you have deviated because you are no longer questioning the passion, the fire, the hunger, the desire, the zeal that you had. Yes, when you started, it's no longer there. It's my job to awaken myself and to awaken you, or else you fall by the wayside. And that's not the will of the Father for you. That's not the will of God for any one of us. He wants us to remain in faith until he returns. To remain in faith means to remain active in the things that allow the intentions of God to continue to flow to the earth. Yeah, he said he hopes that when he returns, you will find faith. For, you to, for him to find faith, there must be men who are carrying the faith. Isn't it? There has to be a group of people. You see, we have to. The Bible says, as the day of the Lord draw near, we need to daily remind ourselves of these things. There's a spirit out there that wants to quench the fire. That wants to put, you know, water on the fire. Burning. <laughs> but we have to daily, daily climb the hill and get f- wood and keep feeding that fire. The days of the baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Oh, I pray that the fire of God will fall on you. Oh, when the fire of God falls on you, friends, you will not be able to sleep. They will take your sleep. You will find yourself rababa shikatando rebebe seka embragaba. Eh, you will be like a woman that is pregnant that wants to give birth. That was how I felt this afternoon. Two hours I was still going. Maraba shantum brada lebre katayando. When I think that uh, I think I'm I'm done now, suddenly hey, the spirit of the Lord steers my heart again. Maraba katonde zepo kaputa katayando mega lebrondo masomba reba. At a point, my my hands was upon my belly. Mekatande brano. I knew something was being birthed in the spirit. Days would tell. Months would tell. Don't allow the enemy to quench the fire. Say, quench not the spirit. Have you read that before? Quench not the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. The spirit can be quenched. Quench not the spirit. Keep the fire burning. You see, the fire on the altar must not go off. How do you keep the fire? You must keep feeding the fire. You must keep feeding the fire. You must keep feeding the fire. More wood, feed the fire. Rababa. Ikatayando. Man, the, the, as you're doing that prophetic word is coming, they will give you direction of what to do next. Yes, you keep feeding the fire. Keep feeding the fire. You keep feeding the fire. And say, well, I'm the only one. Then continue. If you want somebody to join you, give me a call. I'll join you. <laughs> I don't know about feeding the fire. You keep the spirit alive. You keep the spirit alive. You keep, Bible says, you know, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Fervent in the spirit. You cannot serve God when you are not fervent. You have this dull spirit. You're just dragging the whole thing. Uh, No, no, it doesn't work like that. The things of the spirit does not work like that. You have to be alive. Fully alive. That song says, fully alive. Lord, I want to be fully alive in you. Fully awake. Fully awake. Fully alive. Lord, I'm thirsty. My land is parched. I'm dry. I need your spirit.
There are men of God going back to a well that is dry. Want to drink from a dry well? A dry well has nothing to offer you. Just an apostle by name, a teacher by name, a, a, a prophet by name, name, title. But you've lost the essence of the ministry, you've lost the cutting edge. Oh, let me remind you of that. Where's that scripture again? We we're looking at this some time ago. Oh, Jesus, can I find this? Rabababa. Garobobo, Sanda Robdobo. Ah, Rabababa. I'm not sure I can find it. But we looked at it, it's in Ecclesiastes 10 10. If the iron be blunt, it requires much, much strength. The thing is, our spirit has become blunt. Our discernment is almost zero. Almost zero. Zero. And that's why there's so much, you know, mental knowledge. We argue, we, you know, we're into all kinds of things. We hate, we dislike each other. We're into all kinds of flesh things. Why? Well, because we're no longer living via the spirit. But when we begin to, Lord Jesus, take me deeper. Blind my eyes from this kind of things. Open my eyes to see the ways of your spirit. Give me direction into your heart, into your mind. Help me, Lord, to connect with the things beyond my comprehension. Bring me to a new path in the sphere. That I can know. Yes. The path that you have ordained for me. Lead me through the straight and the narrow path. Plunge my feet. Upon the very path that my Lord Jesus walked. Help me. Yes. To locate his heart. Regarding my day. I want to live a life that honor you. Father deliver me. Strip me of pride. Deliver me from ungodliness, selfishness, self-centeredness. Break the hold of the soul life. Make me a man of the spirit. When you begin to pray like that, I'm telling you, something will begin to happen in your life. Something will begin to happen in your life. You see, your honesty in the place of prayer sets God, hallelujah, to lead you into places. Into realms and dimensions that you don't even know exist. There are things the Spirit of God wants to do in your life. In my life. How available are we? Yes, we have to be awakened. Thank you so much, uh, my dear brother, Patrick. Thank you, Brother Desmo, for joining also. Yeah. I'll just highlight some of the things you guys are showing here. I can see some. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have to be awakened. We have to, amen, wake up now, yes. And we need to know what we are waking up to. We need to know what we have been awakened to. Oh yeah. Ecclesiastes the same thing. Yes. If the axe head is dull. And the man does, does not know. Amen. How to wet the edge. I like, I like that translation. He must put forth more strength. Is that not what we're doing? We're putting strength. 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 The, the word of the Lord says it's not by might. It's not by power. But that's what we're doing. Because where we're supposed to labor in the spirit, there is a labor that we've got to come into. They say when we cease from our own works, we enter into the rest. To enter into the rest of God requires a, a labor of the spirit, a journey of the spirit. But we want to labor in trying to, you know, crack things, 
You know? We want to preach. We look for, we spend half of the time trying to look for all kinds of messages, trying to look for all kinds, you know, we, we're trying to look at the right English. We're trying to look at the right expression. That's what we're laboring on. Nah, when you labor in the place of prayer, the right lingua to express the heart of God will be given to you. They say, you don't need to bother about what to say on that day. The Lord said, you just go up here. I will put my words in your mouth. This is what the Lord has been doing in my life. You speak as the Spirit of God leads you. You speak as the Spirit of God prompts you. You speak as the Spirit of God directs you. You speak amen, as the Spirit of God prompts you. We have to undress ourselves amen, and be redressed in the light, in the cloak of the demand of the day. Hallelujah. Sale boyanda, robo boyanda. Awaken our hearts, O oh God. Undress us from yesterday. Bring us, Father, to a new day in the spirit where our life becomes indeed an expression of your intention for our time. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will no longer be satisfied with what we have read, with what we have heard of yesterday. But, Father, that there will be a quest, a hunger, a desire, a passionate thirst, O oh God, for a new Reality of your intentions. Holy Spirit. Rababa Sando Robo Yatande. Yes, 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 yes. We have to be awakened, yes, to the demand of the kingdom. We have to be awakened to possess the kingdom. We have to be possessors, yes, of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word, my brother. We have to be awakened to possess the kingdom of God. It's not for joke. It's not for, you know, people who want to play. You know, you hit it today, tomorrow, you don't know. It's not hit and run. You have to be consistent. You have to be determined. You must be focused. You must know what the Spirit of God is saying. What the Spirit of God is requiring of you. There has to be that quest, that thirst. There has to be that yearning, that burden in your heart. There, you, you, you've got to catch the heavenly vision. That vision, we need to catch it. The vision of what the Spirit of God demands of us. What the Spirit of God requires of us. We have to catch that vision. Not just the vision of, you know, just wanting to have a platform. Not just, not, not a vision of just wanting to do something. No, a vision of heaven. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. This is what the Lord is calling us into. Father, we thank you tonight. It's my desire that you and I will be stirred up. That you and I will be encouraged. That you and I will be fired up. That this word that I've shared tonight will encourage you to rise up in faith, in courage, in hope, in determination, yes, in love, to continue to press, to continue to go forth, to continue to break through, break forth into, yes, the demand of God, the requirement, standard of God for your life, for your home, for your family, for your community, that you will take your place to see to the fulfillment of God's desire and intention. Father, this is my prayer tonight. This is my desire, oh God, for your for your church, oh God. This is what I have been steered, yes, to, to declare and to proclaim. May a company of people rise up, oh God, at this season to see to the fulfillment of your desire. Oh God, may a people begin to rise, oh God, yes, Lord, from Botswana, yes, to Namibia, from Namibia, yes, Lord, to, 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 to Malawi, in the name of Jesus, to South Africa, in the name of Jesus, to Angola, to Mozambique, oh God, that a people will rise up oh god father yes in in southern africa in north africa in central africa yes lord in east africa in the name of jesus in west africa that there will be an awakening a generation of men and women who will never give up oh god but who will continue to pray to seek your heart to seek your mind until zion yes becomes a praise in the land oh father we desire you more than ever before 
more than ever before, more than ever before, we desire to see your spirit move. We desire to see, yes, my dear sister, you stand for Zimbabwe. I stand with you. We want to see God move, yes, in Zimbabwe. We want to see the hand of God. We want to see, yes, a people crying up, crying out for Zimbabwe. Yes, Lord, that you will shift things, oh God. When we shift things in the realm of the spirit, the political leaders, they have no choice but to align. Yes, those in the position of the economy, they have have no choice but to yield to what the spirit of God is demanding. This is our quest, oh God. We stand as a warrior. We stand as men and women, oh God. Position to see your kingdom come, Lord. We pray your will, your purpose, your desire, your intention be manifest, oh God, in our regions, oh God, in the nations, oh God. Yes, Lord, in the continent. Uh, we, pray, we, we pray and we birth these things in the spirit, oh God. We thank you for what you're doing all across the nations of the world. Uh, we pray we stand in the gap for our brethren in America, in Europe, oh God, in Asia, yes, Lord, in Ukraine, oh God, in Russia. We put to stop the hands of the wicked, the mouth of the wicked. We stop the mouth of the lion. We proclaim and we declare this day a generation is arising who will not give up, but who are praying to see the will of God be established. We thank you, Father. We honor your name. We glorify you, God. We thank you for what you're doing right now. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. May that which is done in heaven be established in the earth. May your will, may your purposes, may your intentions, may your counsel be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. We rise today as sons of light. We rise today as sons of light. We rise today as light bearers. We proclaim let the light of God shine within the darkness, systemic darkness. In Jesus name we command you to be gone. Systemic darkness we command you to be gone. We thank you oh God. Yes Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus for Southern America. We pray for North America. We pray in the name of Jesus for every part of the world. We stand in Jesus name. We lift up holy hands and we proclaim the day of the Lord. The day of his power. The day of his majesty. The day of your glory. Come Lord Jesus. May our people arise and begin to disciple the nations to the glory of your name. Oh, hallelujah. Praise to your name, Lamb of God. Yes. Yes, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus for Russia. We pray in Jesus' name. Yes, for every part of the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. For, for, for Botswana. We lift up Botswana. We declare your glory, your will, your counsel, your kingdom. Come, Lord, uh, into Botswana. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we thank you for a holy race, uh, a generation of men and women rising up, uh, a kingdom of priests, oh God, in Botswana, in Argentina, in the name of Jesus, in, in Madagascar. We thank Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name uh, for what you're doing right now all across, all across, all across the nations, all across the globe. Uh, your kingdom come. Your will be done. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We glorify your name, not by might, not by power. Let your zeal perfect this work. Let your zeal perfect this work. Let your zeal perfect this work to the glory of your name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you everyone tonight for joining me. Please continue to pray. Continue to allow the spirit of God to stay your heart. As we join force together. And see yes the Lord break into our nation. We want to see the Lord break into our community. Into our city. Into our generation. Hallelujah. We thank God for his counsel. We thank God for his heartbeat. We thank God for his desire. We thank God that the nation are rising up. Lifting up holy hands. New realities all across. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Really appreciate it. Uh, uh, Brother Patrick, amen. God bless you. Really appreciate it. We bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, my dear sister. Uh, everyone that has joined us, we really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Brother Desmond. We appreciate it. God bless you, Sister Tina. God bless you. Uh, Brother uh, uh, um, uh, Norman John, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Everyone that has joined us, God bless you. Continue to have, amen, yourself a wonderful evening. May the Lord, amen, perfect what he has begun to do in our life. God is faithful. His mercy, amen, will never end. God bless you. We'll see you again. God bless you. Bye-bye. Amen.